Okay, we are live with another episode of Superstar Guest Spotlight. And our guest today is Nicole Leanne. And we're going to. Hi, Nicole. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Glad, <laughs> glad to have you here. So, we're going to learn a lot about. Shamanic healing, shadow work, all that fun stuff that everyone likes to <laughs> to talk about. I know how to so heal. Yourself. We'll explore that. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> from the darkness and you know bringing out all of that. It's a it's it's a very touchy subject, but it's something that we all know inside that we have to you know, do attend to look at. So I know this will be a benefit for, for many people. So if you're here, if you're joining us, you have, co- you have questions about this topic, shamanic shadow healing, not shamanic healing, shadow work, um, just, just, you know, anything around that if you have um, questions, Nicole will take your questions a little later. So stick around to the end where we'll be doing some other fun stuff who knows what what Nicole and her many gifts will be (laughs) doing later thank you so let's yeah (laughs) let's let's share a little bit about Nicole so Nicole facilitates many healing services but she's becoming more known for facilitating shamanic journey services where clients connect to the high spiritual realms and anything is possible to explore and experience in journey, yes. such as personally connecting to deceased loved ones, your guides, ascended masters, higher consciousness, higher self, etc. And actual traveling into interdimensionally through different realms, dimensions, planets, accessing timelines, um, healing tr- traumas through shadow work, inner child healing, past life regression healing, channeling higher wisdom, and so on. These are only some of the many potentials someone might encounter or explore within their journey. So depending on what they need, right? At yes. any time, we will, we depending will go on their, in different directions. And yeah. Yeah. Depending on their intentions of what they are seeking, um, what they're dealing with, what they're trying to address, um, what I'm finding is anything is possible. And I mostly serve as a facilitator of connection to those higher spiritual realms so that they can access all of that for themselves and be the sole interpreter of what meaning they draw from their experience and what they learn and what or what they release and heal so yeah it's a lot of fun I like that. <laughs> on my end <laughs> so they get to do so huh. <laughs> it and it's energizing so mm-hmm. so that's uh, they get to interpret what what they what they go through you know, based on their they experience based on their intentions yeah so their intentions kind of set um set up a roadmap almost as to what might be waiting for them on the other side and and what um we're looking to um have them connect to and, and or what is kind of uh awaiting them in the journey if you will based on what they're seeking yeah it sounds like there could be many surprises I way. learn. I learn a lot. Let's put it that way. I learn. I'm vicariously getting to receive um, as a byproduct of each one of their journeys more information as well, and uh, and I I learn as I go as well um, based on all this these cool experiences that people are getting. So so I'm growing just as much as they are, which, right. is, which is I guess why I also yeah. love it so much. <laughs> yeah, that that makes it so much more powerful. Yeah. For, for both of you, it's like growing together. Um, I see you also talk about different realms and dimensions and planets. That's uh, taking it to a different level, right? Beyond, be, beyond this plane. Beyond this physical plane, beyond 
you being in the way of your e- with your ego and your physical limitations. Yes. Cuz your your soul or consciousness essentially is doing the traveling and therefore the work on that higher dimensional plane which may involve assistance from these higher conscious beings um, such as made up of your guides angels guardians loved ones elders ancestors so um, those are all possibilities that uh, people are likely to experience um, not always they sh- it's not every session that they sh- that they show up because sometimes um, especially if we do the shamanic shadows work sometimes they might kind of take a stand back so you can do the work on yourself because it's um that connection may not be the purpose of their journey but um but maybe a bonus of their journey but a lot of times um they might connect in in a shamanic journey or and it's not even necessarily on that level really like i said it's based on your intentions and um essentially like i said i um I serve as I serve as the facilitating bridge where I guide you out of that out of body experience, which involves the sensory experience as well as I'm also working with energy and different modalities if it's in person. However, what I am finding um, is that it is very possible um, to have equal results from remote sessions as well and distant sessions. So I do offer that as well, um, as long as we have mutual availability to to um be able to facilitate that because some of these journeys can last for several hours if if not longer for for some of them just depending on what we're addressing and um how thorough we're getting into the, into what they need mm-hmm. to experience so what's your favorite modality to use the, sh- the shamanic journey in this, uh... what's that would you say would you ask okay so we'll be talking about that I said, what's your uh, what's your favorite uh, modality that I offer? To use? Um, mm-hmm. Like a service or what I use within the journey, as far as a modality within the journey. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which do you find most um, powerful? I mean, I feel like everything that um, I do on the sensory level is just complementary. It's uh, it does not substitute the journey um where it's like i'm guiding you out and i'm connecting to you energetically um so things like that i might involve in an in-person session would be spectrochrome therapy which is color light therapy um so visible light and working with that with each of the chakras um sound therapy and use of tuning forks Um, I use sound therapy, tuning forks, and vibratory tuning forks, where it instills the vibration into Mm -hmm. you for each of the chakras. Um, Essential oils, crystals, um, laying of hands, healing. But again, um, that's for in-person, obviously clearing their energy with um, smudge or Palo Santo or Florida water Mm -hmm. elixir tonic. Um, But those, like I said, are just, those are, complementary but not a substitute for what your experience would be as far as leading you into that journey um which is something um my higher guides initiated me into how to facilitate that um and so that is where i learned how to how to do this is um initially i was uh doing Reiki, um, Reiki sessions. So energy healing, which I feel like more people are familiar with, which is, um, a modality to balance your chakras. But the more I started working with that is when I started downloading messages and channeling, um, that was meant for that other person. So essentially, um, I, was ending up playing messenger and a lot of the things that I was finding that I was channeling ended up being the key to these people's healings. But um, being a messenger, you are still prone to human fault because those messages are still being relayed through your filters. So there is still Mm -hmm. room for distortion, therefore, or your ego getting in the way of the message getting across. And in my case, you know, my ego not wanting to be wrong. And so I found that I could have either been in the way of the message by wanting to withhold some information if I didn't feel like I had upfront proof in the beginning anyways. Um, or, um, or maybe, like I said, I might have certain belief structures that those messages could perhaps be filtered through that 
can still have a layer of distortion if if it wasn't completely clear in clear channeling, right? Um, but either way, my guides guided me out of playing messenger. They said, we don't want you to be messenger anymore. What we think is more important for that person is to learn to connect to it for themselves so that they then are the sole interpreter of their experience and their guidance. So that's what they take with them rather than me being the, um, the channel. Um, mm -hmm. Because then it's much more uh, impactful is what I would say. If you have your own experience of what you connected to, of what you felt or what you saw or what you were um guided with with insights right or what whatever you encounter you are the one that's going to take that with you and, and apply it in whatever way that you feel necessary you know um such as if you were to see like a psychic or a channeler you know you are essentially giving them your authority or giving them authority over you as to them having a gift that you feel like you don't have and so um you are subscribing to the messages that they're connecting to, to say their guides or loved ones or whatever. But again, you still may run into the issue mm -hmm. that they could still distort it to some extent. And if you feel their um, gift is more powerful than you connecting for yourself, you may never access um, connecting to yourself then, you know what I mean? Because you're trusting it in someone else to give you the information. Just like, yeah, just like we do with, say, doctors, you know, if you're feeling sick, instead of you being in tune with your body and questioning it, like, why am I sick or why am I having this symptom? What is causing it? What's the underlying reason? Instead, you feel like you don't, you're out of tune. And so you go to the doctor to tell them what's wrong with you and how to deal with it. Right. So it's very yeah out of tune with your own inner knowing. And so that's why I believe I was guided. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, it's a letter. <laughs> there's a lot of that disconnect with disempowerment in in um not not having the trust in yes. in the inner in a knowing and um because it, it's also you know there's so much so much attached to that like you know patterns and social conditioning and, and such, and such yeah exactly social conditioning think so, about it when you're when you, your parents are telling you what to do and how to do it because they're guiding you with what they know, but they could also be steering you away from your own inner guidance because they're like, no, you need to do this. This is in your best interest. Right. And so when you're subscribing to that conditioning, then the next layer is your teachers in school, or perhaps in your religion, they tell you a certain thing, like they're the ones that are connected and they're telling you what say maybe the Bible means. But what that, mm -hmm. what that robs you of the ability to intuit for yourself, what does it mean for you if you were to um, choose your beliefs, right? Versus someone else telling you what is right, what was wrong, what's up, what's down, you know? And, and I think we're all guilty of this mm -hmm. in projections um, because that's what we were taught. And so we don't necessarily have um the ability to trust our own inner knowings and our own inner guidance because we've been steered away from that because we've told everybody else that has an authority over you or your government you know society yeah. so so we have a lot of that mm -hmm. in our um in our in our reality that disempowers you from your own inner connectedness if that makes sense <laughs> yeah and, and your gifts and all that so you may have that that ability but you don't believe it because you've been taught that this is the way, you know, that you shouldn't really, you know, like you aren't, aren't the, fi the final expert in this matter. So, yeah. Better uh, ask, ask that person. So, yeah, that that's, uh, can go really far because this, this whole voice and expression and power and all that, right? Um, so disempowered um, we are and we're, we're finally collectively rising out from that slowly <laughs> but surely <laughs> slowly but surely so let's talk <laughs> let's talk about uh, your your path and what led you to take this this particular walk this particular path 
with using these gifts of yours and bringing them all together in, in this way. Yeah. How what was your yeah, introduction please. and where did that lead to? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. so, yeah. so first of all, um, I was born and raised in South Africa um, and moved to the States when I was 12. So I had a different cultural um, experience and upbringing. Um, if we're talking in terms of, um, you know, the United States, you know, and what 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 um, people's upbringing is typically like here. So I had um, I had that yeah. perspective first. Um, but I also think like when I moved to the United States, I had kind of like an identity crisis of trying to figure out like who I am. Cause there was a sense of just coming into this new world and already knowing I didn't fit in, I didn't belong um, and not understanding why, you know, I didn't understand why did I feel this way um, and why I felt so different outside of being from another country. You know, I, I just felt like, um, yeah, it was, I, I just didn't feel like I fit in if you will. Um, and in that, delving, I was uh, introduced to astrology as my first earliest modality when I was 12 years old. And I, that was a great tool for me to self-assess and understand myself from an analytical approach by understanding, you know, and at first it started off superficially on the surface, just with like, you know, your sun sign and then your, you know, curiosity. But um, what I learned is the more I delved into it, I realized it was deeper than um, many would give credit for because, you know, a lot of times it, um, it would be represented in magazines with like your horoscope and you're going to meet a Leo at the movies on this day and blah, 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 you know. So so I feel like there was a, hmm. a very surfacey approach of how astrology was being represented in this way. And the more I delved, I realized how much deeper it really was, um, so much so that it was um, your birth chart is based on the exact minute moment of your birth and what all the planets were doing and where they are in your charts and how it's set up all has interpretation as to what makes you uniquely you and different from say everybody else born in the same you know month sign as you or zodiac sign as you which again gave you um, mm -hmm. kind of a surface impression of personality and i was able to go deeper and understand the the um the intricacies the complexities the many walking contradictions that we all carry and how colorful that is because we're not black and white one way or another, you know, I, we were very, we we're very mm -hmm. kind of complex and I was able to pick those apart in assessment, not only of myself, but then of others and then understanding how the cosmos work um, and learning like the, how the, the planets move and, and their patterns that are always changing at different paces um, mm -hmm. and how they engage with one another. Yeah. It's, like a whole, yeah, it's a, a whole, whole new world, but but what age were, were you when when was, you discovered astrology? Twelve. I was started studying it at twelve, and oh. it, it's been ongoing because oh, I still okay. feel like uh, I'm 33 now. But um, that was my earliest delvings, and um, and, it, and I became quite skilled with it in in, a, in understanding people. Like I said, um, it's really I feel like an art of interpretation. Um, but being able to understand people uh, in that many complexities without necessarily having to know their whole background story, which sure your experience in life also plays a role in how you shape that personality, right? So it, for me, I think it's a great tool to understand the lens that you are perceiving your reality through, right? And this kind of um, also plays a role with if if you understand um, the laws of the universe too, um, because of how you are participating in the reality essentially that you are creating. Um, this lens is very helpful to understand yourself because that lens is what is your filter. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. um because say for example yeah somebody else we'll say for example somebody else we'll say for example sorry no you're good say for example um <laughs> do you have any do you have any siblings like sisters or brothers yeah okay so personality wise you would say you're quite different yes 
Mm-hmm. Okay. And so maybe you had the same upbringing, right? As far as parents are concerned, you lived in the same house, right? But say you you shared in the same experience that may have been, um, like, say it was a traumatic experience, or it doesn't even have to be a traumatic experience. But, um, but your personality lens, and your siblings personality lens might adopt a different belief as to what that means for them and therefore how that experience affects them in what they bring forward into their adulthood and of how they participate in creating their reality, whether they're aware of it or not, because your say you maybe have more of an optimistic nature. And so maybe you didn't allow this experience to, to take on a role in your life where it sabotaged you. Whereas maybe this other person, your, your sibling, if you will, may have and and so the choices that they make in life and how they engage in it maybe they have more victim mindset where they feel like you know life happens to them or whatever you know that's just an example um so understanding your own unique personality lens is very um important i feel um to navigating Mm -hmm. your role in what you're creating in your reality rather than just going at it blindly as, oh, this is who I am ego wise, or this is my identity. But I think if you can process that through a level of understanding, because you can see the intricacies of your chart, um, like the old adage says, know thyself, you know, and I feel like astrology is Mm -hmm. a great tool to do so, as well as, um, you know, there's also a way that you can um, interpret predictive astrology. And that's based on what the planets are doing and how that engages your specific chart to how you may experience certain themes um, as catalysts. So whatever the planets are doing may provide catalytic energy to evolve you in some way, right? But you still choose how to respond to that. And that personality profile might give you an idea of what that would look like. But you also have to keep in mind the consciousness and awareness of that individual of where they are, because, you know, how you might engage an experience as a child through a, a space of immaturity might be different after you've had life experience and you might come across a similar engagement you might handle it differently or react differently right and that would be based on your level of awareness and consciousness so i think all of that needs to be taken into context if you were you know to work with say an astrologer or um you know to have that 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 understanding of where you are in your growth as well um but anyways that started at 12 and that's been ongoing throughout my life and um i would say um I'm very knowledgeable in this area but I couldn't say I'm an expert because what I'm finding is like the ocean the deeper you dive you still never reach the bottom so um you know <laughs> um so that's where I first started um after that yeah it never ends oh I mean it's, it's, it's always it's changing. It, it's it's always the changing the planets are always doing something different and they all yeah. have different lengths um, of time that they may spend before it navigates the next constellation. Um, mm-hmm. And so, and so how they eat. Is this it, something, go ahead. Is this something that you, like you, you just learned by yourself formally, yes. you formally learned? No, I, I, I was passionate. I did the, I did the diving and, um, on my own. Like I, I just wanted to learn everything I could about it because I was so fascinated. And, um, I think for me too, I'm so fascinated by people. Um, not only their personality, I'm, uh, you know, I'm also an artist, but I love drawing people. I like to capture expressions and body language and and things like that. If I were to draw, I find Mm -hmm. people just to be fascinating. Let's just put it that way. Um, and then obviously their story. I'm, I'm fascinated by what's their background story. Not only me just seeing their chart, but what is their, what, what experiences have shaped them, you know? Um, So that's kind of always been somewhat of a fascination for me. Um, And also my own, my own path of trying to figure out myself, like, who am I? You know, that's been my like driving question all my life. Um, So that, so Mm -hmm. the next really powerful introduction on my journey which really uh, like shaped my perspective um, was a modality that I was introduced to um, by my mother and my grandmother when I was 13 and it's a modality that they nicknamed the glass 
which is a um, tool to connect to the spirit realm. Um, it's something that my great grandmother introduced our family to. So in this case, um, I never, I, I guess I met my grandmother before she passed when I was maybe um, a baby, you know, um, maybe one or two years old, I think. So I didn't really have a relationship with her in, in, a, in, in my childhood, if you will. But we would use the glass with my grandmother and my mother to communicate with my great grandmother on, on the other side. And I would compare this modality similar. It's a similar concept to the Ouija um, because it spells out the answers, but it's a homemade version and it's treated with sanctity, which I feel like the Ouija has a poor connotation <laughs> in people's minds because it's been um, kind of used as as a as a game, as shenanigans, you know, like you experimenting yeah. and and or people just not knowing um how to work with it and 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 because of those intentions with the Ouija and and also having kind of a scary influence for some because it because when you are connecting to the spirit realm yes you are opening up a portal but if you don't know how to honor the sanctity of what you're opening yourself up to you can yes invite you know um bad bad energies through or bad entities through or you know um things of that nature. So really uh, this modality Nick, that was been nicknamed the glass is, um, is about um, yeah, treating it with sanctity, protecting the circle and being selective on who or what you are communicating with. And there's ways that um, I was taught to do that. Um, so anyways, but what that taught me as I would you I use this modality not only to where it started to connect with my great grandmother and then after my grandmother passed my grandmother and then certain guides have come through and communicated mm -hmm. messages or if we wanted to if I brought certain friends in who really wanted to communicate to say their lost loved ones you know um, then then that that would be a modality that um, I was able to share with certain people but it was something that I kind of still kept very um, protected and close and not very, I didn't really make it very public. Um, there was kind of like a level of protection mm -hmm. that I had for a very long time with it. Um, and also, cause I think that growing up, there was that sense of, um, I knew it would challenge most people's beliefs based on what they were raised with, or if it, they had, if they had a strong religious upbringing. Um, I also had this feeling like I would be rejected or persecuted in some way if, if they were aware of, of this modality. So, so for me in that, in that time frame, I kind of kept it hidden in my own personal world. But what it taught me was there was more to the unknown or the spiritual realm than what has been learned in our traditional doctrines and what we're told in physical reality. You know, so that really got me very curious. And I, of course, wanted to know more. I wanted to dive more. And so um, my teenage years were a lot about um, dabbling um, in different modalities, divination systems magic, runes, tarot, um, dowsing with a pendulum, like any of those things. Like I was fascinated by it, by it all. And so, um, but I would say after that, a, a more pronounced part of my journey, uh, would have then been when I was 19. Uh, at that stage, did you have anybody, did you have friends around that who also interested in in similar things or no this was something you kept this was very much my own private world it was all for myself I, I I never thought any of these things that I was doing for myself would be what I offered to others that came later on in life um it mm. so the, all this time it was more private minus the astrology readings I because I obviously like had to include people to you know, uh, read their charts, you know, so I did that for free, you know, pretty much all my life, um, up until <laughs> what I'm doing now. But, um, but it was just cause I was passionate about it and I loved it and I, and I wanted to 
um, cause through them, I was also getting better with, with those skills as well, you know, cause I was able to have that feedback as to what I was interpreting. So, um, so astrology was the one thing I did, I did openly share. Um, but all my spiritual stuff was mostly for myself and maybe my, maybe with, within, with my mother or something like that. But I, I don't think I really opened that up until, my early twenties, um, when I brought some of my, some friends into, into that more, um, but not my teenage years, not that I recall. Um, but when I was 19, um, was when I was introduced to, uh, 19, 1920 is when I was introduced to initially the secret, the, you know, which I'm sure, I, I don't know. I'm sure, sure you've seen. Yes. The documentary, the secret. Have you seen it? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I was introduced yeah. to that when I was 19 and that really um, took my perspective to another level of understanding the law of attraction and being so fascinated by the concept that we are creating our reality. Right. And taking in the context of my background knowledge of understanding astrology uh, and, and realizing that we're all individually creating our own reality again through that lens of how we perceive what we're experiencing and how we're contributing to that experience. And then, of course, you know, then we factor in, um, you know, the traumas we might experience in life, the experiences that we have that then also participate in what therefore you are being a match to, if especially if it's all those things that are unresolved. Right. But that understanding, I feel like evolved later for me. So I'll get there. But um, but understanding the law of attraction. So, so the lens, mm-hmm. the lens that, that you talk about is not just, not just the personality, but also will be colored by trauma and your you know, things that experiences and your, beliefs. and your beliefs your thinking process Did you, do we... Does... right yeah so your your um so your personality colors how you might engage your experience but you also might be triggered by certain experiences or what's what you're what you're um seeing in your reality or how relationships affect you you know parents friends partners etc as you get older that may you may be triggered in certain ways because it may be linked to things that um you say it may have experienced in childhood or adopted beliefs or associations as to what meanings you brought for it right so Um, so the personality is one filter, your beliefs are another, your vibrational imprint is another. And again, that's based on what you're energetically holding on to, whether you're aware of it or not. Um, and therefore that's why the shadow work becomes very important and we'll, and we'll go into that, um, once I get there. But, um, so the way we think, because your thoughts have energy and they create. So if you think about it, if you have a belief that's circulating um consistent thoughts that are kind of like habitual or patterned based on how you're being triggered into that thought system and those are energizing things into your reality becoming a match to you which you may then feel like especially if you have more of a negative mindset in that way you know or beliefs that aren't serving you but you've accepted them as true because that's what you were either told or adopted um and or you attributed an associative meaning because of an experience that you that you uh, that you hold on to this belief. And if you don't realize that that is what is creating the proof of what you're seeing in your reality, then yes, it's very easy to feel like you're a victim to circumstance. It's very easy to feel like mm-hmm. you know you're out of control and that th- there's outside external forces that are have an influence and in impacting you. So if you understand the law of attraction and that you are essentially creating your reality, whether you're aware of it or not. But if you become aware of it, you, you almost take your power back. Um, And if you're going to become aware of it, it's also to take responsibility or accountability for the reality you've already experienced up to now that in some way you've created it and it has nothing to do with what you deserve um, or what you necessarily asked for. Cause it's not like you're like, Oh, well, I experienced childhood abuse or I was molested. How is it that I asked for that? Right. Um, it's not that you asked for it, but you may have, cr- you may have participated in that being created because of say an initial imprint. So maybe it took one experience that 
impacted you in a certain way, but because it impacted you so strongly vibrationally, you became a match to say more of those types of experiences, not because you deserved it or not because you are asking for it, but unconsciously you're creating more of it because um, it's, it's a, it's a imprint that hasn't been healed in you. And you're still maybe in an, in an environment where that becomes maybe say normal. Right. Um, so if I were to give an example, um, so let's see what would be a good example. Um, so say you had um, you were, you had a household where maybe your one or both your parents were alcoholics or whatever. Maybe there was some abuse, verbal, whatever, or maybe physical. You know that was your early introduction into into um, your upbringing, right? But then and again, it's not because what you deserve. But say you go into adulthood. Next thing you know, you're attracting a partner who is similarly maybe abusive or alcoholic and you don't have a way to escape for that but you might also have a distorted perception of what love is because maybe that's just what you know and that's what you're used to but it's not because mm -hmm. that's good for you and it's not because that's what you deserve but you might be unconsciously creating more of those experiences because you had those initial imprints so you become a match to more and more and more and of course because it triggers emotions in you it, it triggers hurt. It, it triggers mm -hmm. you know, inner child wounding. Um, you have that imprint that yeah. before is creating another layer of that that becomes closer to you as a match in your experience or future relationships, right? Um, where you might be a match to mm -hmm. um, that being your experience. Um, so... So anyways, yeah. So, um, so yeah, shadow work, therefore, in those cases would be very important to explore. Yeah. So you can try to heal those aspects of you that are unconsciously becoming a match to the undesirable, essentially, because nobody deserves those kinds of experiences, you know, but you just might be a byproduct vibrational match to it because of those early imprints. Um, because think about it when you're a baby, um, you're not born with hate. You're not born with anger. You're not born miserable. You know what I mean? You kind of learn those things based on your experiences. However, that's not to say that you can't be imprinted with that necessarily while still within the womb of your mother, because your mother might be experiencing certain adverse situations or experiences or feelings that might be imprinted into, into the fetus on an on a unconscious level. Um, and so therefore you can still be introduced into the world with a match vibrationally to those circumstances. So again, not because of what you just And how like past lives and all that. Past lives can play a role as well. Yes. As to what karmic influences you might try to navigate. So, and, and what I'm learning from that angle is that we still technically choose our reality um, at least of what we come into, because a lot of times we, on a karmic level, we're trying to undo that. So sometimes we choose to be catalyzed by these tough experiences so we can have perspective and healing as to, and I can give some examples of this, of, of cl clients' experiences. Um, so you can kind of get an idea of what I mean of this too, if, if you remind me before we complete this interview, but um so yes, past lives can play a role. Let's put it that way. Um, so let's see. So yeah, the law of attraction. Um, so that was something that was really empowering for me because it meant I got to create my reality and this time I got to create it on purpose. Someone like myself who's kind of controlling, um, loved, loved the concept of thinking that I, I can manipulate reality so I can have more of what I want. But the, the more I practice working with it, what I also realized is the faster um, the, manifest the manifestation started happening for me. Good or bad was irrelevant because that then I realized I had to learn how to master my mind. Because if the things I was manifesting, be both good yeah, and bad. The, the universe has no judgment as to good or bad what are you projecting mm -hmm. that became in my face very fast at this point so i was being able so i was getting the good and the bad experiences 
word verbatim to my thoughts or, you know, um, what I was projecting or communicating. And so that taught me very valuable lessons on how to put my mind in check. You know, I had to control what I was essentially thinking and I had to navigate, obviously, also what beliefs were attached to those thought processes if if the outcome was something that wasn't desirable to me that didn't feel good or you know like for example getting in a car accident you know what i mean um but i saw certain thoughts manifesting it word for word and it was limiting thoughts <laughs> so um yeah so that was so that was you cannot um, say that you didn't have a thought what's that would you say i said you could not say that you You could not say that you didn't have a part in, in oh, what I happened. Had a, I had to realize. You, you knew that it was. I was creating all of it, right? So that it also made me look back and, you know, my childhood and stuff like that, like, and see how was I re relating to my, um, my past experiences, you know, and how is that, like, impacting me? And I would say in my teenage years, I was kind of, um, I was really – hard on myself. I was very self-damaging um, because I think that the part of me that wanted to belong, that wanted to fit in, and because I didn't feel like I did, I was very judgmental towards myself. Um, uh, I mean, I would, I would, I would pick out my flaws. I would, I would literally be so cruel to myself in my mind that I would like cry myself to sleep uh, a lot through my, through my childhood, but I was my biggest enemy, right? Um, and that's not to say I haven't, I hadn't had, um, some experiences that weren't, um, that, that weren't, that were, you know, not so good, you know, that were kind of, that, that definitely impacted me, you know, and my sense of self and who I was, you know, so I definitely had some of those experiences where it definitely sent me reeling into a dark space within myself, right, where, um, but I would say the law of attraction, understanding that, made me become a little bit more empowered in understanding the relationship of how we're impacted by universal laws, which essentially govern our universe. And if we understand, just like gravity is to earth, it just is, right? Um, these laws just are, and we operate under them. So if we understand how they work, you can, you can participate as a co-creator. And that was very powerful for me to understand. But that took, you know, me navigating egoic pursuits in the beginning because, you know, you're like, oh, I want to make money and it's going to fall on my lap or I want to manifest this car. Or, I want to, you know, so initially, you know, I was playing with it materialistically or um, or in attracting my partner, um, who's now my husband, you know, like I created him word for word for word um, on a vision board that I put all these things on. And like within two weeks, he manifested for me and looks identical to the picture on my vision board and has all these characteristics. Um, so that was very powerful for me. And this Um, so that's something that's consisted since my like 1920 that that I still live my life by because I, I understand it. But obviously, like I said, there's always an ongoing process of um, self mastery and self healing. So that way I, I'm not creating from a space of the unwanted. Let's put it that way. Um, so that's always I think anybody's unfolding journey. And if, if you're aware and in my case, I'm also my own um guinea pig in that way of of trying to navigate mastering myself and mastering my mind um or my own healing but something that i felt was very transformative for me um that i feel like um anybody can benefit from and it's just a matter of misunderstanding of people not knowing how to understand this and and that was uh, what i mentioned the art of forgiveness um in the email that me and you were disclosing. And um, what I realized is when I was in those dark spaces within myself, um, due to like, you know, whatever meaning I took from my past or certain experiences, and how much maybe anger, or resentment, or loathing that I may have had um, because of somebody's somebody else that may have impacted me in a certain way. Maybe that some of that was attributed to them, but I would say at the end of the day, it was really loathing and um, 
uh, that was brought onto myself. Like I was judging myself and I, and I like talked myself into a really bad, um, space, um, in my own self-concept because of what I allowed, say a circumstance to mean to me. And, um, so th- I did have a period where I was running away from myself, which was at a similar time frame as being introduced to the law of attraction. And I would say that was um, once I kind of uncovered and tapped into the art of forgiveness was when I was 21. And, and in that stage, too, was when I was also running from myself um, or would would be drinking and partying because I was trying to numb myself from myself essentially it's like I couldn't even look myself in the mirror because I was so mean to myself right um and finally it was so destructive that one thought was like I can't live I can't live anymore you know like part of me is like I this is suffering why why am I experiencing this so there was that thought process of the alternative of like I want to leave this world you know um, because I created so much suffering in my life um but when I really sat with myself and realized that I allowed an instance, one instance in time that I brought forward one, say one trauma, I allowed it to mean so much about who I was that I allowed it to destroy me. So one, one day, one moment I was torturing myself for years. Right. And that I find to be pretty common with most people of what we allow some circumstance in our life to mean what we allow it to mean about ourselves and how we might shame ourselves or hurt ourselves in that process or judge ourselves or however we engage with that. And and so I finally said, I can't do this anymore. I was like, I have to let this go because I cannot continue life like this. It's not worth it. And so that's when I kind of fell into the concept of forgiveness where I was just like, I have to forgive this person Mm -hmm so I can set myself free. And so I did, I chose to forgive this person. And now I also learned I had to forgive myself for, for my limiting, my limited consciousness at the time where the instance may have taken place and, and, and not knowing how to handle it or how to handle moving forward from it, you know, and how I abused myself in the process. Right. Um, But I found like once I like chose to forgive, it was like all this heavy energy that I'd been wearing for so long, Mm-hmm. It was like I it was like it was like a transmutation. It was like I felt so light afterwards just by forgiving one person um, and the meaning this experience had in my life that um, mm-hmm. is that your phone <laughs> and um, that energetically I felt so light like all this weight just came off my shoulders and I felt so free. And actually, I think this happened before. Um, I think it probably happened pretty right before actually the, being introduced to the law of attraction, because I think once I became light it was when that new information um, came to me actually. So I think I mixed up the timeline a little bit there, but, um, but what I, with that one experience, I was like, I wanted to go on a forgiveness spree. I was like, who else can I forgive in my life? You know, who else has impacted me negatively so that I might be holding on to something with, you know, and, and the more I did it, the lighter and lighter and lighter I got. So if I think anybody can benefit from the art of forgiveness, but I feel like what gets in the way of people believing that they can forgive, right? Especially think about, um, the perspective. So, um, so say you've had a childhood trauma, say you were abused or it doesn't even have to be childhood. It could be any point in your life. You were betrayed, you were cheated on, whatever, and how that impacted you. And you're like, how could I forgive that person? They hurt me so bad. There's no way I could forgive that person. Right. People come into that energy because of what they think Mm -hmm. forgiveness means. The reason why they have a resistance to forgiveness is because they think forgiveness means justifying or condoning that other person's actions or behaviors. And that isn't what forgiveness is. So, of course, there is a natural resistance if that's what you think forgiveness is. It's like it's like almost saying it's okay what they did. And that isn't what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is not saying whatever that person did or said or perhaps what they didn't do or didn't say that impacted you negatively, right? Um, 
It's not saying that was right. It's okay. not saying that that was okay or that it was justified. Um, so that's the first step that people need to realize if you if you want to free yourself through the tool of forgiveness. As I, I would say, forgiveness is a tool to set yourself free. Because think about it. If essentially you've allowed these experiences to mean something and this person impacted you so badly and you're carrying this anger and this resentment and this hatred and the sadness and this pain, whatever it is and however they um, affected you, who's the one that's really suffering at the end of the day? It's yourself, right? Because you're carrying those, those heavy energies with you. And remember what we said, the law of attraction creates. So if you have anger, you have hatred, you have resentment, you're creating another experience to come towards you that's going to give you the next layer of that resentment, that next layer of that anger, that next layer of sadness, right? Um, or death or loss or whatever. Huh? Unless you, like, unless you're transmuting it, unless you know what you're doing with the emotion, right? So, like, so, like using it to, for, to help you. It's a tool to, to set you, it's, it's, because, yeah, it's a tool to set you free. So if you think about those energies, you're the one that's choosing to hold on to the anger, right? You're the one that's choosing to hold on to that pain or that resentment. It's kind of like you're holding on to your own shackles and you're not letting it go because you're like, how can I forgive this person? They mm -hmm. did this to me or they hurt me or blah, blah, blah. Right. That's and, and it's, again, it's because we think it means justifying or condoning how they impacted us. And that's not what it is. But essentially, you're holding on to your shackles that are weighing you energetically down. And again, that byproduct yeah. not only affects your reality I think but affects you your I, physical well, energy people do afraid of the justice like justice wouldn't be saved if if you yeah. give you know yeah they they don't trust the, in you know like the what will i forgive and, and you know this this will be this is not not resolve you know you know, in a fair way and all that. But eye for an eye. They create suffering. They need to have their due karma, blah, blah. Yeah. And they might want a part of that vindication. And But even if, say, like, justice was served in this matter and say, like, this person went to prison, right? Do you, is it over in you? Just because, okay, good, they got locked up or they got their, their justice, are you still carrying that wounding of that anger and that resentment, even though they got their justice? So what are you still carrying with you? Or do you like, oh, I'm free now because they got theirs. So are you really free in those sentences, in, the, in that same stance? Um, because if you're still holding on to all of that, even say that other person got their karma, whether you played a role in it or not, in that vindication or justice, if you will, what you are carrying with you energetically may have not resolved itself because of what they got in return the other person right mm -hmm. so so that being said you still may still attract mm -hmm. negative experiences or relationships or whatever or in this case it could also manifest physically because it because it wasn't resolved energetically in you you didn't actually heal from that experience just because someone got their justice or karma or if they didn't and if they didn't get their karma or the justice you might still be angry and mad that they didn't so energetically, you're holding on to that. Mm -hmm. And you think about um, chronic illness can be a manifestation of what is left unresolved in you. You know what I mean? Which could be attributed to any number of reasons. I mean, it doesn't even have to be someone, what someone did to you. It could be a choice you made. Like, for example, somebody who may have made the choice to have an abortion. That how they in felt about that and how they internalized that or how they may have not given themselves the space to process that energy or that maybe the shame that they had with it or the or what that made them feel like right can manifest in things such as like you know breast cancer or um you know cervical or over ovarian cancer things of that nature it can manifest in symbolic ways um so if you if someone is exploring physical ailments or conditions especially if they're chronic it is very important to explore not just what is the physical under underlying reasons as to why that manifested for you like poor health lifestyle diet etc um 
but what made you a match to that energetically and exploring it from the emotional, mental, spiritual, um, as well as physical? Because a lot of times the conditions or the physical ailments are a manifestation of the energies you've internalized that have had nowhere to go, that you've been chronically holding on to, that had no choice to manifest in certain ways. So, um, so there's lots of angles to explore this and, and hence why that shadow work we discussed is, is a calling for people to, to go there because we're not taught in society to heal. We're taught to cope. We're taught to, um, numb ourselves or pretend that it's not there, sweep our stuff under the rug. So we don't look at it. So we don't feel it, feel it because in human nature, you want to run away from anything that is uncomfortable or painful. You don't want to look at it. You don't want to see it for what it is. And so we adopt certain coping mechanisms to numb ourselves or like drinking, numbing yourself with drinking, escaping yourself, drugs, alcohol, you know, um, binge watching TV is a coping mechanism. Right. Binge eating is a coping mechanism. You got to ask yourself, what are you hiding from yourself that you yeah, can Yeah, because feeling good is- Yeah. And we do that in all areas, feeling. physically, emotionally, mentally, like, um, Physically, if you, if you have a headache, instead of exploring, well, why do I have this headache? What's causing this headache? What do we do? We want to get rid of the pain. So we might be drawn to the Tylenol, the Advil, etc. So we can numb. Yeah, that's why pain relieves the. Yes. And so essentially you are numbing um, your body's way of communicating with you, telling you. So if you have a symptom, it's telling you something's wrong. Your problem is, is that you're trying to get rid of the symptom because it's uncomfortable. Yeah, that's a great rather, example. Rather yeah. than um, addressing the why. But our emotions do the same thing. Your emotions don't lie to you, right? If you're sad, there's a reason why you're sad. If you're angry, there's a mm-hmm. reason why you're angry. But the problem is, is we're not necessarily right. validated in those emotions by others because it makes other people maybe feel uncomfortable because they don't know maybe how to process it. Or maybe you don't know how to process it and understand those emotions because you're too busy trying to not feel those things because it feels uncomfortable or painful. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, because when, when you're feeling that way, people quickly tend to try to make you feel better, you know, instead of, instead of going deeper because, they themselves may not do that for themselves, right? So, but that's how society it's a, is. It's a, but it's so destructive. Yeah, it's so destructive to us on a human level, on a soul level, because we don't ever get the chance to heal. Yeah. You're just essentially hiding stuff from yourself and pretending it's not there. And so yeah. you're faced with a was- crisis situation where maybe you have that fatal diagnosis that you know, you have terminal cancer or that you have, you know, uh, some sort of ailment that's going to, you know, uh, limit you in a way or that death might be around the corner for you before maybe someone might make the choice to make a change to because they're trying to address Mm -hmm. it. But again, like we said, the problem is we give our authority away to someone else telling us what's right for ourselves and we lose that ability to empower that we have the ability to heal ourselves. So for example, if you go to the doctor and they say, oh, you only have three weeks to live, you're either gonna be the person that says, this doctor obviously knows what he's talking about and you accept that fate. Well, trust me, you, that fate will be yours. You're not, gonna, you're not gonna have a miracle scenario if you don't believe that a miracle is waiting for you. So that's your belief. You believe you're gonna die. so. That's going to happen faster than you think it, than you think it is because you've accepted that as, as your fate. But if you're the person that challenges the diagnosis or challenges the what the doctor tells you and says, "No, I don't accept that. I got a long time to live, and maybe I need to make some changes. Maybe there's a reason why I have this, and I need to take ownership as to why. Now I need to figure out why do I have this." What made me a match to this? What is my life? Yeah. What Instead am I accepting? So, but obviously, yeah. if you if you, are, you address the I things think before, are really good. What's that? Yeah. No, what'd you say? Sorry. So health health is a really good example for because you know, like you see it mm-hmm. so so commonplace. Um, it's just so you know, like. You can't deny that that happens. 
when some someone is given is given like a so much time to live they meet sometimes they could immediately just become depressed and give up because of that alone yeah. and think about depression how low vibration instead of depression is kind of linked to an energy of helplessness but yeah also um, depression is also kind of like swimming in all of your stuff that you've accumulated over time so all that unresolved emotions all that unresolved experiences depression is like being it's like kind of swimming in all of it but not knowing what to do with it because you've accumulated so much of it um that you feel like you're essentially mm -hmm. drowning in all of that energy um and that's because you've you've never addressed any of it as to why you're feeling those ways um and then and then the, and honestly i think depression is another good example of what i like to use um so if i were to ask somebody um like what depression feels like i know your puppy's going off in the background there. <laughs> um but if i were to ask somebody what depression feels like um a lot of times i get like responses like <laughs> i feel like i'm drowning i feel like um i'm struggling to stay afloat that i'm sinking or my head's barely above water kind of thing you know like a lot of times they that's not always the language but a lot of times it has that symbolic language of the body of water and water being symbolic of the feminine and emotions right so essentially depression is like you're swimming in that water but you feel like you're drowning in it right or you're doing this to stay afloat and then you got to ask yourself well why why are you doing this so um so i say okay well let's put you in that body of water let's say you are feeling um depressed and you're having all these overwhelming emotions that you can't get out of and and so we put you in that body of water now let's say that surface of that water is the neutral zone of like peace right calm and um but you're not floating on it right you're like being pulled under you're doing this you're trying to get gasps of air and so maybe you have tastes of moments that feel calm or peaceful but that's not your constant right your constant is i'm struggling so um so like, then i say okay well why so now i give i use this in an analogy form let's look at your ankles let's say attached to your ankles are um, shackles attached to those shackles are cords attached to bricks and cinder blocks now let's say each one of those bricks and cinder blocks is representing a heavy toxic emotional state of being and every memory that reinforces that state of being that you are holding on to like baggage what is what's going to happen if you're in that water and you have shackles with all those bricks and cinder blocks what's going to happen What do you think is going to happen? Can you hear me? Are you there? Hello? Yeah, it just froze. Uh, yeah, it did freeze. So so if you were to an answer my question and, and you were in that scenario where you are being pulled under, then you have all those cinder blocks pulling you down, what's going to eventually happen? You're doing this. You're you're struggling to stay afloat, but what's going to happen? How long can you con how long can you stay doing that, struggling before before you can't do that no longer? What would happen mm -hmm. if no longer you could no longer hold the, the that heaviness and stay afloat? And essentially what would happen? You would drown, right? Because it's pulling yeah. you under. Because eventually you won't have the energy mm -hmm. to, to still gasp for a breath while you're being pulled under, have, having that heaviness drag you down. So, so essentially mm -hmm. depression is like that. Now, still a lot of that is because you've accumulated that over time to um that you've never addressed in healing right you've accumulated but you've have your coping mechanisms to not feel what you're carrying like carrying a backpack full of bricks you're not looking at it so it's not there but you're feeling it energetically it's still there um and so still people might still have another escape way of trying to even escape depression and that would be one it would be you know antidepressants to completely numb feeling altogether so you don't feel anything at all so so again 
you're you're numbing your your um, body's way of communicating with you um, what's going on. So now you don't have any way of knowing where you're at. So your emotions being your compass, you have no like could be dangerous. Yeah, you don't know what you're feeling. You feel, it's almost like coexisting, like like with a pulse, like a barely beeping pulse mm-hmm. on the heart monitor, right? Um, it's it's like you're 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 existing, but you're not really living because you're not feeling. You're not really engaged in your reality. So that's one way to again have a coping me- mechanism to check out of your reality, so you don't feel why you're feeling the things you're feeling, right? Or the other option is, you right. know, maybe someone would would consider suicide because they're like, this is too painful for me. I want, I want to leave this world altogether because it's got to be better on the other side than what I am experiencing here. Right. So, so again, we're still looking for an escape, but now my question is now you're in that water, you're Mm -hmm. doing this, you, you're being pulled down, but wouldn't the path of least resistance be to cut the cords? What would happen then? If you were to cut the cords that are attached to the bricks and cinder blocks that are weighing you down, what would happen if those were to drop away from you? You'd ride. Then you'll be able to... You'd float. You'd float without having to struggle. Think about when you're in the pool. Mm -hmm. If you are just floating, you can float on your back. You would become buoyant. But obviously, if you add bricks to you and you're trying to swim in the water it's going to pull you down (laughs) so essentially that's what we're doing um with the service the shamanic shadows healing um which i'm kind of skipping ahead so we're kind of jumping all over the place um so i apologize for that so it hasn't kind of been linear in um explaining my my story versus these different modalities because i feel like i'm giving teaching but um but essentially um essentially the the shamanic shadows healing is a is um what i've been guided to to do to lead people into that out-of-body experience to essentially do work on themselves in tandem with what is kind of being affected in each one of the chakras and the whole goal of it is to have you essentially um cut the cords to what is weighing you down so the natural byproduct of that should be to feel lighter energetically as the natural byproduct not by trying to force yourself to think positively or force yourself to um go against what is actually weighing you down it's like it's like it's like that's counterintuitive it's like it's like i'm gonna climb up this ladder but i'm gonna bring this heavy backpack up with me well wouldn't it just be easier if you put the backpack down that has all the rocks in it and climb up the ladder it would be much easier right so essentially energetically speaking that's what you're doing when you're in that shamanic shadows work is you're you're and it's systematic on how we approach all of these angles and um and it's very thorough and comprehensive in what we're trying to address from that space um but the whole goal of it is to have you develop a new sense of awareness of self and a relationship to self by also relinquishing some of those heavy burdens of what you've been carrying around with you throughout life That has no purpose and does not serve you, Um, especially if you think Mm -hmm. in terms of it's creating on your behalf. And therefore, are you really happy with your reality? Or is there something missing Mm -hmm. or is there or is there experiences that, that aren't serving you or is your physical health not serving you? Right. So I'm not going to say the shamanic shadows healing is going to make you have a bounce back in your physical health. What I'm saying is it's going to help you address perhaps what the underlying causes are from the angle of the emotional, mental, and spiritual that therefore can give you the space to heal physically, especially if you're addressing it from all angles. Because obviously, yes, you do want to take into account well-being from all angles, including physical. So making sure that you are conscientious and mindful of what you put into your body not only with the food you eat and the water you drink and what have you, or the toxins that you put in, that people put into their body that are obviously poisoning them. So having that sense of awareness to make lifestyle changes are yes, important, but just that alone doesn't mean you're going to heal yourself, especially if the reason why you have say a physical condition or illness is caused by what you have not healed or addressed that may have stem from your life experience that you're holding on to energetically, emotionally, mentally, 
um, where it could be physically, phys- mm-hmm. physical, like say you break your arm or have your, and you know, you become paralyzed, then sure, that was a physical experience that therefore might have the opposite effect of affecting you emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, because now of a sudden you, you, you have been robbed of your physical faculties and what that now looks like for you, right? So it can have a backwards effect, but most people don't always look at the underlying reasons. Why am I experiencing this? Why am I feeling this? Why do I have the symptom? There's all the healing is always in the cause. And our I would say our traditional allopathic system has that backwards because they're treating you um they're treating your symptoms. They're not going after why do you have that symptom? And that is why um healing is not possible because they're also um not th- taking it from a holistic approach, like the whole you. You're not just a physical being. You're not just emotions. You're not just a mind. Yeah, not just that's, a brain. That's, you are uh, the spiritual that's being. How people are, are trained to see it too, well, because yeah, and of it's, and it's you wonder why they're, they're yeah, and you wonder why they're disconnected. So so yeah so the so the mm-hmm, shamanic that's status, what they've been told um told to listen. What's that? As as a you know, that's what what people are trained to. To see as you know like how how this how things work how the body works and it's it's black it's like it's backwards it just stops at the physical so well, it's like a machine because of the Newtonian concept that it's we're like, just moving you know just working it, body parts just, like a like a car if the engine dies you take the engine out and you fix it and you put it back in or you get a new one and you put it in and so they treat they treat. Mm-hmm. healing from that perspective that oh okay if you're having heart problems let's take it out or oh if you're having lung problems let's take it out or here take this medication take that ne- medication you know um but still you're still not exploring well why do you have that heart issue and it's it's nice to be put everything under the umbrella oh it's genetics or oh it's blah 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 you know what i mean like um I'd say genetics play maybe yeah. a role, but it's not as, I don't, because you're the ones that activate those genes. So genes mm-hmm. can play a role, but you're the ones that, that has the control through consciousness of how it's activated to turn on signals yeah. in your body that may make you a match to things as well. Stress, you know, stress also makes you susceptible yeah. energetically to you know, things not functioning for you properly, things breaking down, wear and tear. Mm -hmm. We're not meant to be in a constant state of fight and flight, fight or flight. But genetically, as humans, it was something that served us in man um, before, you know, long before in time when, like the common example is when you had to run away from a saber-toothed tiger. When you're running away from the saber-toothed tiger, your body wants to put all the energy to run, to flight, to escape. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's not and it's and when it does that, it takes all of its energy away from rebuilding you on a cellular level to healing you, to digesting to all those mechanisms, because it because it's like, well, those things aren't important right now because you need to run for your life. So obviously, if we were too busy digesting and building cells, that's not going to save you from this, you know, saber toothed tiger that's about to eat you. Right. So. Yeah. But but, I know we can talk talk so much on this topic. (laughs) (laughs) but it's um yeah it's already been so you know so long we've been 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 chatting about it so i don't want to think back yeah okay (laughs) (laughs) well do you have any closing questions you can tell you're passionate about this subject well um well just just sharing your your service like your the what you offer related to this the shamanic shield so um so i as far as contacting me me you mean or what's your question regarding it yeah or what what offer do you have around the shamanic shadow healing is it a service that that you have a special service um like you mean like an offering, like a pr- promotional deal or something? 
Is that what you're asking me? Yeah, that or if, yeah, or in general, if if you have some, so you know, just to, just to share what you offer. So okay, so um, if people wanted to contact me, like I said, I have many modalities that I offer. Obviously, the ones we got caught up in speaking about were, are the ones I'm most passionate about, and the reason that is is because those are the ones that I'm finding to be the most life changing, and I'm witnessing that before my eyes. Um, like I said, the shamanic shadows healing is really about um, addressing the shadow aspects of self, which is very transformative for people. But so is a shamanic journey. So say, for example, you're suffering because of the loss of a loved one. And obviously you're 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 disconnected on how to connect with them because they're not in physical form. And so you might still be suffering due to that loss. Right. So you are very likely to be able to connect to your loved ones in the spiritual realms that I guide you into so that you can have your own engagement or interaction with them or closure or healing or just knowing that they're okay or they might give you closure because maybe they feel guilty by what maybe their experience with you was in reality that they had limited awareness from. So they might gift you that from now a different perspective that they are on from the other side of things. So healing can come from that um, or connecting to your guides. Um, so, so yeah, so I would say if you were interested, like I said, anything is possible to explore. Shadow work is just one component, but I mean, like you kind of gave the prenup to in the beginning, interdimensionally traveling, um, exploring past lives. Sometimes your higher self might want to guide you to um, a past life that is impacting you now and certain themes that are showing up for you and, and wants to show you what that is so that you can understand why this pattern is happening as well. Right. So, um, I won't know what, what you'll connect to until we lead you into that. And I help you guide you through that, um, depending on what you're connecting to and how I know where you are in your journey is because all my clients are channeling, meaning speaking through their physical self, what they're either seeing, feeling, learning, downloading, um, and experiencing overall. Um, and that's how I know where you are in your journey or where maybe you might be stuck or what you need assistance with from me into guiding you and, or, um, what say higher conscious beings might be also helping you with as well. Um, so all of that, so like I said, anything's really possible in those realms, um, where healing can be possible. Enlightenment can be possible as far as receiving very higher perspective insight that can be very meaningful to you. Um, so if someone's interested in that, um, my website is uh, www.holistic, spelt with a W, so W-H, so holistic dash, so like a minus sign, um, vitality, V-I-T-A-L-I-T-Y.com, where you can learn more about my services. Um and they're not all spiritually based. Some are technology scientific based, like quantum biofeedback, uh, photon sound beam machine, which is based on Tesla's technology. Um, I do the astrology readings, Reiki, and obviously the shamanic work, um, sound therapy. So I have a lot of cool, fun tools and modalities that I offer. But yes, the ones that I'm most passionate about um, is the shamanic work. And again, that's just because I am seeing and witnessing and experiencing simultaneously uh, the transformations that my clients are undergoing, but simultaneously I'm growing just as much. So, so I get rewarded in that sense as well. So I love it personally for both reasons. And, and again, because it's helping people go into those layers that aren't accessible in mainstream ways. Um, and, and so educating people about what it is that I offer is the hard part for me because it's not something somebody normally knows to seek out. And so I do kind of have to put myself out there. And that's what even my guides keep telling me is I need to put myself more out there, which is what, why I um, connected with, with you when you put that offer out. And I said, okay, I need to put myself more out there, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> people, so can people know, can people can know this kind of thing exists and so that they know that there's ways that they can find healing the only prerequisite to be a recipient of this type of healing and modality is uh, an open mind, um, an open mind to at least explore and see what your experience will sh show you. Um, 
and so so that would say i would say that would be the 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 only really the real prerequisite the only other thing that i would say might get in the way of someone's journey is if they have so much physical pain that it keeps them trapped to their body because it's kind of hard to like disengage when um when you're so enraptured into physical pain that kind of traps traps you back in body. So I would say sometimes um, those clients might struggle to kind of leave body. But other than that, I would say I'm seeing a very high um, success rate in what people are experiencing, whatever is meant for them. So. Yeah, sounds really powerful. Yes. I, I, that's magical. the word I use. Magical, powerful. Yes, those are words I like to use. <laughs> and of course, transformative. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> cool. Well, is there any well, questions you have for me before I guess we conclude? No, that's it. Unless you wanna want want to say one final statement, like what do you want to to leave people with? So okay. a message. So um, I wanted to, because I feel like I didn't complete my explanation of forgiveness as to how you can make it work for you. And like I said, um, first is um, trying to uh, reestablish what forgiveness is. So, so again, realizing it's not condoning or justifying. So that's step one. Two, this is an exercise that I feel like can help you on a consciousness level. Obviously, it may not work on the subconscious level, which is what we do in the shamanic shadows work as well. But um, but this is something that you can do at any time. And the way I like to do it, and you can try it out for yourself, is um, I like to do a candle meditation exercise. But first, what I'll do is I'll do kind of like a letter where I'll go, dear so-and-so. So the person in question that has impacted you negatively. And what you really want to do is first confront that person. Meaning like, because a lot of times in, in spaces where you experienced a, a, a negative experience regarding this person, um, you you may have not had the opportunity to to speak your mind or really confront them of how they impacted you right so this is one way is that you like give like it's kind of like having a confrontation like you did this and you said this and it hurt me so much and it has affected me in all these different ways and it's affected my relationships since then because of how this experience with you impacted me so i really want this you um whoever's trying to do this you lay, it all out. lay it all out you really <laughs> want to like get it all off your chest you're confronting this person right you're like you did this you mm-hmm. said this blah 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 then that's when you then you kind of take your approach differently but in saying like and you really have to through your own free will agree with this process to do to do this for it to to have an impact in your life right it's, you don't want to just go through the motions otherwise it has no meaning but then you tell them, but despite that, despite all that you've caused in my life, despite all this hurt and suffering and pain and blah, 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 despite that, I know it is my choice to forgive you because I know by forgiving you, it sets me free. And that is more important to me because I deserve to be set free. I don't need to relive this experience mm-hmm. daily in how this one experience or many experiences repeatedly with this person I've allowed it to, I take, I've taken this into, into my future, into my present, you know? And so for that reason, I am choosing to set myself free. And by doing that, it's my choice to forgive you. So that being said, I now choose to forgive you once and for all. And I mean it. So that's in the letter form. So it's kind of you getting all your thoughts down. Then I like to do it with the candle exercise where you like I make my own meditation candles but um but you can go to like a spiritual store or you you know it can be a candle you just have to kind of maybe um have a symbolic meaning of this is kind of like a um, a ritual exercise for you to to process this closure right um you light the candle and you envision in the flame of the candle that you're kind of staring into and gazing into imagining that person but I don't want you just to imagine that person I want you imagine them shrinking in size to I guess my baby's wake but um shrinking in size to my um to their inner child self right because we all have had this experience of having a wounded inner child but if you can visualize that this person that may have caused you harm is doing so from a wounded place that was never healed in them 
not again to justify what this was dished out to you, but to understand that it came from somewhere, meaning their needs in childhood may have not been met, or they may have experienced things as well that they did not deserve. And even though sure they were an adult and you expect that adult to know better, when it comes to a wounded inner child, you don't always react from a space of care, you know? Um, you, you might react from that space of pain and you might cause harm in another or say things that are hurtful. Um, so if you can kind of visualize that person that you're connecting to that caused you harm, but see them as a child, it will be much easier for you to realize that that child deserves forgiveness as well to set them free and to set you free, Mm -hmm. but mostly to set yourself free. And so then you can, as you visualize that person as a child, then you read this letter to them and really mean it. And from that space of empathy that you're connecting to this child, a wounded child, you can then say, I forgive you once and for all. And then you can then burn that letter symbolically, obviously do so safely, you know, make sure you have a pot or something that you can mm-hmm. put the ashes into. But that would be your symbolic way of closure to say, to finally let this burden go, let this energy go. But again, you have to do it intentionally with meaning and not just do it because it's an exercise. You have to connect to this exercise with meaning through free will. So that, I would say, is a very powerful tool. Um, and you can try it out and um, see how it affects you. And I would say start with the people that have impacted you the most because um, it's like moving boulders out of the way. And then you want to go after the people that are just little stuff, you know, that just bothers you or whatever, you know. So start with the ones that have had the most impact in your life, I would say anyways, um, because that because that energy, it's kind of it's, and how, you know, it, it's working for you is if you feel that lightness afterwards, like that letting go of like, oh, I can breathe again. You know, um, that's when you know that you you were pretty successful with this exercise. And some some of these relationships might still be in your life. And so sometimes they can still be toxic to you. And so maybe you need to continue to forgive every time, you know, like how they may impact you. But then that, that then there's also something to be said about boundaries and how you let someone impact you. So that's another story. But or that's another suggestion but i would say forgiveness is is a powerful tool that anybody can use if they can understand how to work with it and what it means versus what we have allowed it to mean through misunderstanding because it's been misused over time so it's not justifying or condoning Mm -hmm. it is to set you free yeah it's really it's really a simple act but it's just so much resistance to Mm -hmm. to actually getting to that place to do it yeah yeah um but yeah thanks do, for sharing that but once you do it's so powerful like i mean it was very life-changing for me in in catapulting me in out of my own darkness into into exploring more of the light mm-hmm. so. nice well i hope i hope the uh, people on the replay will catch this <laughs> yeah. i'm sure a lot of people would would benefit from this so thanks for sharing that and being generous with your information and your passion thank on you the subject of uh, shadow healing and yeah thank you <laughs> yeah my pleasure oh yeah it was great to great to connect with you thank you on you know and how we get together <laughs> nothing happens without you know, with also bigger us behind it. So yeah, I I'm really grateful. So we're who whoever you know is here now. I don't think anybody's here right now. But Reen was on earlier, and she she said thanks to for sharing. Oh, so yeah. whoever's here, I know that you'll be and I'm still sure. really inspired by this. Yeah, and I'm sure as either of us share it, you know, those that are, that are called to listen will benefit just by listening to it and maybe taking some pearls that are useful to them and what they Mm -hmm. can do in reality. And of course, if um, they feel drawn to wanting to explore this work for themselves um, and they resonate with, with what this Mm -hmm. could possibly mean for them, then I definitely um, don't hesitate to reach out to me or go to my website and you can, um, 
email me as well. Um, and uh, we can maybe set something up for you and, and see yeah. wh- how I can maybe be of service if, if you're drawn to working with me. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much, Nicole. So we're gonna, we're gonna close now. Sure. And uh, yeah, I believe, so you shared, you shared all that. I'll, I'll post the links after, so under under this and you could also too if you have anything extra to add and with that we wrap up today so bye for now for for until next time until the next edition of the superstar guest spotlight and so it's bye for me and bye from nicole (laughs) bye bye nicole